through three hours of the regular show on Terrestrial Radio, and you wanted a little bit more, so that's why you found the Gun Talk After Show podcast, where we saved all the best things that we can't say on regular radio. Now, here's Tom, Michelle, and Jim for the Gun Talk After Show. It's the After Show, We're getting together with Jim and Michelle to talk about, well, things that happened before on the show and things otherwise. Mm. A lot of things going on. Michelle, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I am great. I'm up here in the mountains right now, and we've got snow like 45 feet deep or something. Yeah. It seems yeah. like it. it's a lot of snow. <laughs> I never had to dig down four feet to find my propane tank so that they could fill it. That's uh, what I've been doing this Whoa, week. Wow. Fun. Ooh, yeah. I know we had to have fun. <laughs> Why would I want to stay home where it's like 70 degrees and beautiful, right? <laughs> you definitely yeah. have a contrast of seasons. <laughs> Yes, this is true. This is true. Well, we got to go up and visit some friends. We're playing up here. Oh, goodness. Tell you what, we got Matt uh, lined up. You would like to talk. I don't want him to wait any longer. Matt, thank you so much for joining us for the after show. Yes, sir. Thank you. So what's on your mind today? Well, I just wanted to call and tell you thank you very much for everything that you have said on your program about self-defense and being aware um, you have definitely made my wife and I way more aware of our surroundings and everything that's going on uh, around us. Uh, I actually had to use a little bit of knowledge that I got from you um, on your show in what could have been a self-defense situation, but I think I was able to change it around to where it was not a self-defense situation using it. Really? What? Uh, give me an example. Uh, I was filling up with fuel at a, at a convenience store and a... Uh, my wife was in the vehicle with our three kids, and I was just getting done filling up with fuel, and a gentleman pulled into the pump right next to me and jumped out of his car and come walking pretty briskly over to me, and I was able to be paying attention and see what he was doing and was able to uh, talk to him in a rather loud, rude voice, and uh, he was a very large gentleman, and get uh-huh. his attention that he needed to keep his distance away from me. And what did you say to him? It did not him? take him very long. Uh, can I help you? What are you doing? I need you to, to stay back. Uh, he was, he did not have what good intentions on his mind. I could tell. I was just going to say, what was going on? Well, I mean, was the guy like just drunk and a little bit whacked out or was he actually intending to do you harm? Do you think? Well, I'm not a hundred percent sure because when I started talking, I talked to him in a normal voice at first and he didn't respond. And as I got louder, uh, he started paying attention to what I was telling him. Uh, you know, you that know happens a lot. People are too nice, and they let people get too close. I was trying to yes. create this. Yes. This was a, a very big gentleman. I mean, he was probably 6'9", and every bit of 270. And you don't want to let him get close enough to get his hand, hands on you, because, I mean, at that point, you lose. Yes, sir. Exactly. We don't, the other thing that may have been happening, too, whatever his intentions were, a lot of times when you get really loud, and this is a, a good tool to use so people understand, Yes, you get his attention, but you get other, everybody else's attention. And all the heads swivel around like what's going on. And all of a sudden, he's got a lot of people looking at what he's doing. And so when you get loud, when you say, stop right there, don't move, do not come any closer, everybody who's within earshot starts to look. And you stop him and you get a lot of support. And witnesses. <laughs> and witnesses. I never so. yeah. thought of that. A, that's a great point. Witnesses, because these guys don't want witnesses. Mm-hmm. So let me ask you, did you have a gun with you? Absolutely. Did you think of that you were going to have to pull it? For about a half a second, I thought about it. And I thought, no, I'm going to try this first. And I was, I was backing up as he was walking towards me, creating distance. And then I started talking louder, and he stopped. And I went ahead and back up even further. And uh, it, was, it was something. Were you on the ready, can I ask that, to be able to pull if you had to? I mean, did he see a motion in that, that direction? No, ma'am. Okay. Uh, I, uh, I got in front of the pickup and had him quartering away from me, and every time I get out of the truck to fill up, the doors on the pickup are always locked, so I wasn't worried mm-hmm. about him getting in my pickup. Um, okay, my wife good. was actually in the vehicle, and she actually uh, noticed what was going on and heard me talking in a loud voice and actually had her gun drawn in the vehicle. That girl. Ooh. I like this girl. I like it, yeah. You know, it occurs to me something Please else that you guys may want to have a conversation about, Matt, you and your wife. If something like that were to happen again, she can lean over and just lay on the horn. 
you know, again, let, let's get a lot of attention. Let's get people looking, that kind of a deal. But I like her reaction. She was ready. She had her gun. You didn't pull yours out, but you were ready to. But I like the fact that you used verbal commands to stop. And that does two things. One is it was a really good day when you don't have to shoot anybody. But then, frankly, if you ended up having to shoot, then anybody who was around would say, yeah, this guy kept telling him to stop. Don't come closer. I mean, he, he was trying to you know, not have to shoot this guy. Yep. That's worth a lot uh, in the aftermath. Anyway, I tell you, I, I think Matt and his wife did a great job. As you guys analyze it, what do you think? I, I have to agree. I mean, you know, that's it, your first response isn't to pull a firearm, of course. You want to avoid that at all costs. So I think he did a great job. He was moving. He was yelling. He was trying to get attention of the person coming at him. And and the other thing was it also, if his wife was looking in a different direction, it, it put her on a different alert system. So she uh, was uh, then ready. Mm-hmm. Good point. Yeah. I also like the fact that he said that when he gets out to pump gas, he locks the car doors. Right. Mm-hmm. Which, that is just smart, and most people don't do that. Which means he took his keys with him, right? I mean, right. if it was a modern vehicle, no, at least. Cause probably. The, right, with the fobs and the way everything works anymore. But, yeah, it's perfect. Either way, yeah. Either way, or if his, if his wife is in the car, she may have locked the doors when he got out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, whichever. But, uh, the, I mean, it sounds like... A good outcome. Mm -hmm. The problem is with those situations, you're left never knowing what the guy actually intended. And so there's a tendency to second guess yourself. We, in flying, we talk about this a lot where you say, well, you know, I didn't make the flight because I thought the weather was going to be bad. And then the weather turned out to be good. And and I always say, look, if you start second guessing yourself, then the next time you're going to get yourself further into a bad situation because right. you're going to say, well, you know, it, it turned out okay and probably I overreacted. You, you can't second-guess yourself in these situations. Right. Well, take it the other way. Let's let's uh, assume for a second that this guy was um, a homeless vet, just wanted a cup of coffee and was going to mooch a buck. So what? Mm-hmm. You, you, you embarrassed yourself and you yelled at some guy and it turns out he was totally innocent? Who cares? Right. Exactly. And if it had turned out, if that was the case, then if the guy had basically backed off and just said, hey, I just you know, want to see if I could get, you know, do you have a, a buck or something or whatever, mm-hmm. uh, then you can work on that level. But until you get that figured out, you have to honor that warning bell that's going off in your head. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, we civilize ourselves to the point where we push down those instincts mm-hmm. and it gets us in trouble when we don't pay attention to them. We go, yeah, he probably, no, nah, you know, I don't want to, and like you said, Jim, I don't want to embarrass him. I don't want to, you know, cause a big commotion. You can always when apologize. When the bell goes off in yeah. your head, you, you got to, you got to get in there. You got to say something. You got to do something and you got to do it right now. Right. And if you're wrong, you apologize. So what? Yeah, sure. Exactly. Well, and the situation heightens, right, because his family's there with him. So it's not mm. just him. Mm-hmm. Now right. he's got more things to consider, more people to consider. And, I mean, options are pretty limited at times, depending on the gas station setup. Yeah, you're So, right. I mean, if people are around or, you know, inside, cars are parked, wherever, I mean, you know, it, it's, yeah, you, you just can't take a chance. L- let me paint the picture for those who may not have gone there in their heads. And this is what bad guys do. It happens all the time. You're pumping gas. They come up, and they just hit you one time. You go down. Now you're down right next to the car, between the car and the pump. You're out of sight, you know, and they can do anything they want to do to you at that point. Mm-hmm. If you let them get that close, it's all over. And, and a big guy like that hits you one time, you're, you're out. Mm-hmm. You're, you're, you know, you're basically incapacitated, and he can rob you. He can hurt you. In the case of a woman, he can grab you and throw you in a van, and you're out of there. Never to be seen again. You can't let them get close. And you have to be willing to say, you know, like you said, can I help you? What do you want? And then they go, the old trick of, well, you know, I just, as they're starting to take another step forward, you go, that's far enough. I can hear you just fine from here. What do you want? Mm-hmm. You, know, you, know, and, and, uh, and then you say, stop right there. Do not come any closer. But I love the fact that he was not just given the commands. But he was making distance. He, he was because distance is time. Mm-hmm. Distance is time. It's, you know, he was giving himself the time by getting the distance. I love that. And can I throw out there also the commitment it takes to do this and to have this in the mind 
the clarity to be able yes. to take such actions. The whole purpose to watching the first person defender series is so you have this information, situational awareness, and know how to react and what to do if something were to happen. Amen. Just watching one time, okay, you pick up some things, you watch the second, the third, the fourth time. Now it becomes ingrained more and more and more. These are things that we need to revisit constantly. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we talk about our shooting skills, which is extremely important, but the what ifs and scenario skills are equally as important, if not sometimes more than shooting. Yeah, recognizing it early on. And that's. I honestly think that may be the biggest benefit to watching the First Person Defender series. Mm -hmm. For those who don't know, our First Person Defender series, it's a, God, we're in the sixth season, maybe the seventh season now. Wow. It's on our YouTube channel. uh, It's on our Hulu, uh, our Roku channel, rather. Roku, all the rest of them. Just look for Gun Talk and look for First Person Defender. Um, We set situations up. We put people into these self-defense situations. And we always try to have some kind of red herring or... I don't know, a distraction or try to make it more realistic. Like, you know, not everybody there's a bad guy kind of a thing. You have real people who are just good people walking by. But it, to your point, Michelle, I think what it does, it gives you the awareness of stuff happens. And what if, and you see something at the gas pump and it triggers that memory of, oh, I remember that scenario they did with first person defender. That's just how it happened. And you make a great point. It's, it's a commitment. What do you mean when you say commitment? It, it's the repetition. It's knowing that you, well, first of all, you have to commit to the fact that you're going to win it. And the only way that you can win it is to have this mindfulness of what you would do if. Mm-hmm. I like the idea that you're going to win it because people say, well, you know, uh, my first goal is to is to survive the attack. Says, no, 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 no. Wrong nope. mindset. Yep. You need to win it. <laughs> well, my, my first goal is I am going to win. I am going to defeat you. I don't know how it was, but even way back, I, I never, even as a kid, I never believed in the concept of a fair fight. I thought that was silly. <laughs> I'm not going to get into a fight with somebody. And if I'm attacked, I'm going to win. And I don't care if that means... A two by four or a Coke bottle or whatever it is, I'm going to use anything I have to. I'm going to win it as fast as I can. And I'm going to put the, whoever it is down. Mm-hmm. And I, I've always had that attitude. You're a savage. You're just paranoid. Yeah. You're just paranoid, you guys. <laughs> All you gun guys. Well, I, I have found that also if you just go up and hit somebody first, that's the best way to win. <laughs> nice. Oh, wait. Did I say that out loud? I'm sorry. That was maybe a. Should, yeah, probably shouldn't go that far. Okay. But then, yeah, you, you prep, preface it <laughs> no. with fuller brush, man. It's just not quite the same, you know. It's not the same. Collect no. for the newspaper. No. Bam. No, 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 no. It's, now we're getting into the uh, laugh-in kind of stuff. So, <laughs> uh, No, that was a great call. I, I appreciated that and the fact that uh, the conversations you have. And obviously, he and his wife had had these conversations because right. they were both on the same page. And that's huge. Well, and it doesn't sound like, and, and people, people, some people just can't afford some of these classes that are out there, right? I mean, some of mm-hmm. them are outside of their mm-hmm. means to be able to, to seek no them and need them. And so the ability to watch something like what you produce is amazing when you hear this side of it, right? I mean, mm-hmm. they didn't have to spend money. They just had to spend time. Mm-hmm. And that time right. probably gave them the ability to share the story. I mean, you don't, he doesn't know the intent, but it did give them the ability to share the story. Yep. And similar to that line of thinking is this guy doesn't know necessarily what would have happened if he didn't say anything. Right. What he did may have saved his life, his wife's life, whatever. It's the same thing with these videos. Tom has, I mean, there's no way to track how many people have been, uh, you know, have had bodily harm reduced or had their life saved mm-hmm. by watching some videos. Right. You can't, you can't measure things that did not happen. Right. right. But yeah, you could be prepared for them if they do. But we have had a lot of people like this contact us and say, you know, I think probably watching your shows may have saved our lives. Mm-hmm. And you go, okay, okay. And no one should doubt that or second guess it. If they believe it, if watching the shows made them more aware, made them take proactive action, that's a good thing. No matter what the reality is, they feel good about it and nobody got hurt. 
Well, and this is one area where reruns are positive. <laughs> You're not just wasting time. You're saving your life. <laughs> this yeah, could save your good. life. That's right. Because you know, I do find that when you go back and watch it the second, third time, you see things you didn't see at first. You go, oh, look, there was another guy back behind there. I never saw that yep. second guy yep. back there. Well, yeah. and, and that's... That's how you are in that situation, too, possibly. You know, you don't know how many people are, are behind you when you're just looking forward. Right. <laughs> well, a- actually, after the break, I want to throw one more thing about Matt's situation that we didn't really cover. We kind of covered, but I think it will uh, kind of drive the point home. Okay. Well, let's take a quick break because I cannot wait to hear what it is. Built for personal and home protection, the Smith & Wesson M&P 380 Shield EZ Pistol features an easy-to-load magazine with load assist button, an easy-to-rack slide, and the M2.0 crisp trigger and enhanced grip texture. With its easy-to-rack, easy-to-pack, and easy-to-shoot design, the M&P 380 Shield EZ is perfectly sized 380 protection. Find out more at smith-wesson.com. The next big thing for the AR-15 has arrived. The Brownells BRN-180 Upper, a modernized version of the Armalite AR-180, featuring a 16-inch barrel, a 223 wild chamber, and a full-length pick rail. The BRN-180 skips the buffer system to allow complete function of the firearm with a stock folded or extended. Best of all, the Brownells BRN-180 mounts to any mil-spec AR lower. Visit brownells.com today. It's the next generation target pistol, the SW22 Victory from Smith & Wesson. Stainless steel frame, interchangeable match barrel, thumb safety, fiber optic sights, and a Picatinny rail. The SW22 Victory is ready for anything, targets or small game. Also available with a threaded barrel or cryptic camo finish. And it's backed by the Smith & Wesson Lifetime Service Policy. Learn more about the SW22 Victory at smith-wesson.com. All right, back with you here. We were still talking about uh, Matt's phone call. We're watching our videos, first-person offender, having his self-defense conversations with his wife. said he hasn't taken classes, but uh, he's been kind of clued in by a lot of things we've done through Gun Talk, through the radio show, through our videos online. And I don't know what would have happened, guys, uh, but you got a guy, he said, what, how big did he say that guy was? Big. 6'9"? <laughs> it's a bigger boy. Huge. Yeah. It's a bigger boy. <laughs> He is a big not, guy. Not He's the, coming at him hard and fast. Right. And not that size necessarily matters. I've seen some little guys do some lot of damage. Yeah, but, absolutely. But, I, you know, human nature yeah. says the bigger the scarier. Right? But in, intent is sure. everything. Right. Right. And there's a disparity of force aspect to sure. all of this as well. Sure. Mm-hmm. Now, there's one thing he did I wanted to touch on that I thought mm-hmm. we kind of touched it. He, he made distance. But by doing that, by getting around on the opposite side of the truck, he also did something he hadn't discussed yet is in essence he checked his six because you're pumping gas and a guy comes at you like you described earlier tom Mm -hmm. and he's not the guy that whacks you in the head it's his partner that's coming up behind you so by moving you you've also you have to look where you're walking usually and that that gives maybe possibly right but i'm saying gives you an opportunity to see what's coming up behind you because a lot of times the threat is a diversion to the real threat yes absolutely um i I remember a situation i was in downtown baton rouge (laughs) I may have shared this with you. Mm-hmm. It was with uh, Chris Serino and Ryan and me and right. uh, Michelle yeah. Serino. Yeah. And we're going down the road, walking down the street. This guy comes up and just starts hassling us. And he's getting really nasty and ugly. And at that point, I turned around and just looked behind us. Because I knew I did not have to deal with him. Because we had plenty of folks there who knew what they were doing and were well equipped to take care of that. Mm-hmm. But my first thought was distraction. Just what you're talking about, Jim. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, you know, and then again, that's another reason. You know how we're, we're always saying that if both you and your wife are trained and you've had these conversations, how much more effective it is? Mm-hmm. What if all you do is that one of you turns and looks behind you when something goes wrong to find out is there something coming at us from a different direction? Mm-hmm. Because you actually can't do that. You've got to focus on this threat that's out there. You well, can't turn around and be doing a 360. Well, think about it. See, see, we're decent people. Well, you two are. I, I'm an idiot. But well, yeah. let, let's assume, think like a criminal. Well, there's a couple there. I want to rob them. And 
would be a great way to do it. Well, a great way would be for me to distract him and let Jerry sneak up behind him and cold cock him or shoot him or mm-hmm. throw him to the ground, whatever. Yep. That's a great sure. te- it's a great technique from the bad guy's perspective. He'll make me paranoid about going to the gas station look all by myself. You, look up behind you, Michelle. <laughs> Gosh. Would somebody walk up behind her and just yell boo right Yeah, now? right? <laughs> <laughs> I've got eyes in the back of my head. I'm a mom. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I know what you're doing. Put that down. How do you know? I'm a mom. I'm a I mom. I got eyes in the back of my head. <laughs> and clean your room while you're at it. Yeah, well, that's wasted air space. There's <laughs> yeah. no point in using your voice on that one. Yeah, clean no your room, room, really? No. No doubt. Oh. I, uh, you know, for those who don't know, I was thinking about his wife in the car. A couple of things. One is that you, it's okay to shoot through the windows. Yep. From inside the car. That's where I thought you were going with if, it. Yeah. If, that, if, if that's what you have to do, windshield or side windows, do what you got to do. The other is, you know, if you need to, if you like, for instance, if this guy ended up taking down her husband and he's wailing on him, then get out, come back around and do what you need to do. And for people who say, well, if he's just beating him up, it's not a reason to shoot him. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Most certainly. People get killed with one punch. People get blinded for life with one punch. Uh, yes. At that point, it's like, no, I'm not issuing a verbal warning. We're just going to stop this with whatever it takes. And you know, the firearm in the hands of somebody who knows what he or she is doing and is willing is the best tool. Just is. Right, but that doesn't mean you Because at that point, you're not starting the deal. You're, you're ending the thing. Right. You're not starting it. Right, but you don't forego other options in the meantime, because like you said, any day you don't have to shoot somebody is a good day. Is that an old uh, if, uh, Jeff Cooper line? If it's not, it should have been, right? <laughs> <laughs> but think about it. I mean, if you've got other options, it's it's... I think often the anti-gun people think, oh, so somebody gives you a dirty look, you're just going to pull a gun out and shoot them? It's like, you really think that way, don't you? You really well, think how that dirty is of the look? us? <laughs> Was the eyebrow raised? Just one eyebrow? Yeah, right. Did you roll your eyes at me? <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. And the tendency for most of us is to disengage in any way we can. But in order to do that, I say this a lot, you have to check your ego at the door. You know, when somebody says, oh, yeah, you know, look at him. He's, he doesn't want to fight. He's running away. Go, yep. Because if I fight, you're going to die. And it's going to be ugly for everybody. And you know what? If I can just walk away, that's cool. It's, we're just going to end this thing right here. And there's nothing wrong with running away. And I think the aftermath of all of this should be discussed, too. Because, you know, if something were to or would have potentially gone down, that's something that that family lives with forever. Mm. I mean, that is, that's some yes. therapy to help them get yeah. past what happened. I mean, this isn't this. <laughs> it, it, it's a tough decision, right? I mean, you have to decide when that's oh, going to happen. Right. It's not like what tie you're going to wear in right. the morning. So, you know, the people are like, oh, you would just do that? Yeah, no, I wouldn't just do that. Well, but that, that's but why if you the think situation, about it. exactly, the situation showed you think itself. A hundred times, a thousand times before. So you've already played the situation out, the scenario out, and you know, if this happens, this is what I'm going to do. And now you don't have to make a decision. You just execute. Right. And You've this already is made a- the plan. You execute your plan. Kids, get your heads down. I mean, whatever it is, you know. I mean, everybody picks up on the heightened yeah. situation, mm-hmm. you know. So, it, it, yeah. Well, take it a step further, Michelle. You've got any average self def- justifiable self-defense shooting. Your legal representation, civic and criminal, usually the criminal is waived, but it's $100,000 plus. Right. That's, and that's if you're justified. The divorce rate for people that have been in justifiable self-defense shootings in the first two years after that are astronomical. The stress mm-hmm. it causes on your family. So even if you're totally in the right, you survived physically, but there's a hell of a lot that comes after it. The same thing can be equated with rapes that happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I mean, yes. it destroys people's lives. Yes. And some people just can't get past it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And this is a terrible situation to be faced with. I mean, I don't, I, people have to understand the severity of the outcomes. You know, and I'm sorry that uh, we lost Matt. His phone dropped out because I didn't get a chance to ask him what happened at the end. Like, did he call the police? Did the guy run away? Uh, you know, what happened? Because if that happened to me, I'm calling the police immediately. Sure. Mm, because absolutely. this guy is doing that to me. He could be doing it to somebody else. I yep. want them to know about it. Or, yep. or he could just be a psycho and say, hey, I walked up to this guy to ask him directions, and he pulled a gun on me or mm-hmm. he threatened me. I mean, you want to be the first to call. Well, yeah, that could be turned around against you. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Yes. And, yeah, the, and the exactly. crooks know that. And, yeah, and it, it is a race to the 911 operator. It truly is. And as soon as it happens, you get in your car, 
you lock it. Maybe you drive away, get to another place, but call the police and, and say, listen, what just happened? This is the description of the guy, the whole drill. Uh, chances are, and here's the thing that people understand, chances are pretty good that the police will actually know who you're talking about. Mm. They probably know this guy. You know, they, they probably have a history with this guy. But, and that's exactly you do need to make the call. Yeah, and that's exactly you know to the to the fact of being loud and getting witnesses. That's what you need. You need witnesses, and maybe it's it's mm-hmm. you know you you're going to be shaken. The adrenaline and everything else that you're feeling is going to be pulsing through your body. So you're going to be shaken by the whole situation. But you know what? There's footage. Everywhere we go nowadays, everywhere we go, you know, so security, there's that that information is available to the police. If you need to get yourself out of there, get yourself out of there and do what you need to do. But make the phone call. You're talking about security uh, cameras everywhere. Do you guys have dash cam, you know, video cameras in your cars yet? I don't. No, I don't either. But I've been thinking about doing it. It just seems like there could be situations where that could be really useful, you know, just in terms of things that happen, whether it's a traffic accident or somebody coming up and accosting you in a car or whatever, I just so to prove that I, the I'm not deer really the downside. Right. Well, yeah, to prove, the deer to really prove that the deer really hit you. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's federal law. Any car made after May of 2018 has to have a backup camera. I think in a few years mm-hmm. you're going to see that becoming just standard equipment is a, a dash cam at least. If not a rear cam, that but that doesn't do actually they, record anything. Though. No, I'm saying that does record that you know you've got SD card or but whatever. Because no, 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 you're, you're saying Michelle, you're saying the backup camera doesn't record. Right. Correct. Right. right. Nothing records. Well, do any of the manufacturers offer a dash cam as an option now? I don't even know. That's a great question. I don't know of any, but you, I mean, you can go on Amazon and get them, and you put them on your car. It's you know just basically they hook onto your uh, rear view mirror. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just just kind of thinking about it. It's. Uh, Besides that, you probably end up with these cool YouTube videos of meteors or things that people post all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it about all these uh, dash cameras in Russia? I yeah. think it's because they have so many people who do these fake jump out in front of you, I got injured uh, claims. Oh, yeah, that could be. I've seen a lot of motorcycle um, helmet cam stuff in the U.S. Yeah. Lots of yeah. stuff. And they've used it for, you know, this guy ran me off the road, etc. Have you heard of the uh, swoop and squat uh, type of scam that they do for insurance claims? Yeah, yeah. Somebody drives, they drive, they duck in right in front of you and then hit the brakes immediately and you smash into the back of them. Hmm. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a known deal of insurance scams and you know, they just cut in in front of you, slam the brakes and you hit them. Yeah, brake check. And if you had a dash camera, that, would, uh, that could help with something like that too. Mm-hmm. I'm doing a factory mm-hmm. integrated dash cam search on the web right now. They're, they're giving reasons why they don't have them, etc. Uh, <laughs> why, why they don't have them? <laughs> yeah, I mean, why they don't offer so, them? As, as, I'm, I'm sure the cost option. is astounding. Yeah, that's one of them. The other one is the the support of it and the uh, the liabilities, um, etc. Yeah, if it doesn't work, then are they liable? But yeah, you can. Uh, I'm going to say for like a hundred, hundred fifty bucks, Amazon, you can get one and put it in your car. Right. So just a thought. I mean, it's part of the whole security. Think about something like this. Uh, if that were running, when this guy comes up to Matt, it would be really nice to have a video of that. Yeah, now you can get it on BMW and the Corvette. Uh, the Corvette option's eighteen hundred dollars, and the quality's not as good as the hundred dollar ones. They say. <laughs> so there you. But it says Corvette on it. So meanwhile, we're back to Amazon, right? <laughs> right. Wait a minute. Does Blink offer something? <laughs> <laughs> Just runs on batteries. No I don't see why you can't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Really. No kidding. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. It was uh, it was a fun week. Uh, good show. We had a lot of good guests, a lot of great calls, and some really nice range reports. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. You know, so uh, the, the, I did love the uh, the guy whose dad got the CMP nineteen eleven for fourteen dollars and fifteen cents. Yeah. Right. <laughs> it, it mailed it to his house. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> that was great. And he only, yeah, it is. And he only paid like seven thousand times as much. For- 700 yeah, times or something like that. It's whatever it was. That's All cool, right. though. Well, you guys have a good week. We'll do it again uh, next Sunday. All right, Tom. Take Be care. Good. Well, that wraps up another Gun Talk After Show. But if you want even more gun-related stuff, don't forget to check out Gun Dealio. It's the app for Apple and Android phones that connects you to all the Gun Talk shows, plus even more. And we'll catch you next time for the Gun Talk After Show. Yeah.